All right, now we talk about some of the anatomical differences. On the left top is a human skeleton. Bottom uh, left is a chimpanzee, um, front and back. If you look at the uh, top right, that's a fossil skeleton called Homo erectus, burst in the Homo line that we came from. Um, and then bottom right is Lucy. Anybody heard of Lucy? Okay. Now, if you had to evolve from Lucy to Homo erectus, how many changes would you need? Well, they're listed there. You need a new spine, new pelvis, new rib cage, new legs, new tees, uh, toes and feet, skull, jaws, face, etc. Um, a group, Bramble and Lieberman from Harvard University, did a study of how many physical changes would be necessary to evolve the ability to run from Lucy to Homo erectus. They counted something like 16 different changes, coordinated changes. How many mutations do you think it would take to get 16 coordinated mutations? Anybody? Well, more than 16, right? If you have to get 16 coordinated mutations, do we have enough time? A paper by Durrett and Schmidt from Cornell, um, they calculated how long you'd have to wait to get one mutation from a human lineage. These are the standard assumptions, population of 10,000, mutation rate, generation time. It would take six million years to get a specific mutation in a DNA binding site. How long did it take for us, supposedly, to evolve from chimps? Six million years. So that's a problem. Um, what about if you need two mutations? They calculated that too, 216 million years. And that's when the first mammals appeared. So, um, my caption says it all. There isn't enough time. Okay, now we get to the fun stuff, origins. When, about 2011, I got an email from a philosopher, and this philosopher asked me, how strong is the evidence against Adam? And I said, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. If Darwinism is wrong, who cares? But I'll go look. So it started me on this journey so that I'm standing here in front of you today. I went into the literature, and it showed me some surprising things, and it continues to show me surprising things. You know that the theistic evolutionists and the evolutionists in general say we had to come from a population of how much? 10,000, right? From six million years to the present, 10,000. Never a bottleneck of two. Well, over the last few months, on BioLogos website, there's been a conversation going on between theistic evolutionists scientists, not ID-friendly, over whether there could have been a bottleneck of two. And finally, one of them got tired of arguing and decided he'd do an experiment. On the left, you have what's called a derived allele frequency. I don't want you to worry about the technical details. If you care about them, you can ask me later. Um, but what you have represented there is the data from um, the Thousand Genome Project, and it's got a characteristic curve. On the right is what happens if you start with a population bottleneck of two in red and let it go for 500,000 years. Do they look similar? Yeah. In fact, if you tweak uh, the conditions of that experiment at 500,000 years, you can match the curve pretty exactly. What does that mean? It means that 500,000 years ago or earlier, there could have been a bottleneck of two. Now, 
another scientist said, wow, I'm going to go test that myself. And he went and used another equation, another program. He ran it. And guess what result he got? 500,000 years. And he said, OK, wait, now this can't be right. So there's this other thing called transspecies polymorphism, big name. I'll call it TSP for short. What it means is, theoretically, if we came by common descent from a common ancestor at the top, and we shared genes, and as time went on, we diverged from one another, so we are represented down at the bottom, orangutans, gorillas, chimps of two kinds, and us. Now, can you see how there's some branching going on so that all these species are inheriting some genes in common? <clears throat> That's called transspecies polymorphism. So that would mean that some of these species, say gorilla and chimp and homo, all share the genes in red, called the MHC complex, or HLA, as I refer to it, stands for human leukocyte antigen. It's part of the immune system, present in all these species. Is it by common descent, or is there another explanation? Could there be another explanation? Sure. What if there's selection driving all of these genes to have similar sequences? Then they would look alike, too. Here's what he found out. He, he used a program that identifies where there is convergent evolution in the genome. He found out that the similarity between uh, these genes appears to be due to convergent evolution. It was such a striking signal that he, he said, it's stunning. It's amazing. I asked him about it. He said, I'm surprised. To sum it all up, it's very simple. A bottleneck of two or a first pair that's older than 500,000 years is possible. Does that mean it had to be 500,000 years ago? Not necessarily. My group is working on a model that doesn't involve evolutionary assumptions, and we are going to be testing different scenarios and seeing if we can demonstrate there could have been a bottleneck or a first pair at a younger age. This is based on the analysis run by two non-ID scientists. It's not me saying it, it's them. Future models may change it, and TSP uh, verifies it. This whole debate has been a surprise to many people. So to summarize, we are more than our bodies, we are more than our brains, we are more than our genetic code, we are much more than souped-up apes. We could have come from two. Thank you very much.